Welcome to the first episode in a two-part Legendarium series about the rise and fall of Eric Bloodaxe. In part one, we will talk about how Eric Bloodaxe became first the king of Norway and then the king of Northumbria in modern-day England. The Norse sagas described Eric Bloodaxe as a stout, handsome man, strong and very manly, a great and fortunate man of war, but bad-minded, gruff, unfriendly, and silent. He was one of the many sons of Harold Fairhair. Born in the year 860, Harold Fairhair succeeded his father at the age of 10. His first conquest came when he suppressed a revolt in the uplands region of his kingdom. Afterwards, Harold's pact with Jarl Hakon of Laid allowed him to pursue further conquests throughout the western coast of Norway, though he claimed only nominal authority within the interior. Harold's career in Norway climaxed with the Battle of Hofjersford, likely around the year 890. Harold Fairhair's conquests and the taxes that followed in their wake led many Norwegian chiefs to emigrate to the British Isles and later Iceland, helping to set off the invasions and exploration of the Viking Age. During his reign, King Harold married at least half a dozen women, and they begat him twenty sons. Of them, Fairhair's favorite was called Eric Bloodaxe. Eric Bloodaxe was born around the year 885 to Harold Fairhair and a wife named Ragnild the Mighty. Unfortunately, King Harold's kingdom was not big enough to divide among all his sons, so they would have to make their own way in the world. At the age of 12, King Harold gave his son Eric five long ships, and he raided the coasts of Denmark, Friesland, and Saxland. In years to come, he raided Scotland and the region around the Irish Sea. During this time, he earned the nickname Bloodaxe. Sometime after these expeditions, he returned home and married a woman named Gunhild. Later Christian writers, with their love for stories about evil wives spurring their husbands to commit atrocities and sacrileges, portrayed her as a conniving witch. In one notable story handed down by Christian writers, Gunhild urged her husband to murder three Finnish wizards who she believed laid a curse upon her. Upon the death of Harold Fairhair in 931 AD, at the age of 61, a fratricidal war began among his many sons for control of the Norwegian kingdom. Supposedly, with his wife's poisonous words bubbling in his ears, Eric Bloodaxe murdered five of his brothers and half-brothers to seize the throne, at least for a time. Yet the earls found his rule so hateful that they drove him into exile, and one of Eric's surviving half-brothers, a man named Hakon the Good, returned from the court of Æthelstan of England. The furious Norwegian nobles elected Hakon as their new king. With nowhere else to go, Eric Bloodaxe, Gunhild, and their children found refuge in the court of Æthelstan of England. Not long after his arrival, Eric and his wife had a son named Harold, who would later become King Harold II Greycloak of Norway. What Eric did next is not known for certain, though some sources speak of him allying with the Norse lords of the Orkneys and then harrying the coasts of the Irish Sea. Indeed, he married one of his eight children, a daughter named Ragnild, to Earl Thorfinn Skullsplitter of the Orkneys. Around the year 947 AD, a greater opportunity presented itself. Northumbria, in what is today the north of England, saw itself as a world apart from the southern English. Indeed, the southern English would have probably agreed. For a generation, the Prince Bishop Wolfstan played the role of kingmaker in Northumbria, elevating kings who were willing to preserve northern independence against Æthelstan's House of Wessex. In the north, priests often took more than one wife, as did leading men, long after their southern neighbors embraced Christian monogamy. An ethnic hodgepodge of Celts, Nordic, and English lived side by side. Their great trade center of York did brisk business with both Irish chiefs and Danish jarls. 
According to southern writers and northern priests, its green and rolling hills pulsated with powerful and ancient magic. Southern monks wrote of rune engravers and heathen priests in the north who communed with monster gods of yore in places where stones moved and trees spoke. In 947, Archbishop Wolfstan convinced the earls of Northumbria to elect Eric Bloodaxe their king in the hopes that he would bring Norwegian aid to their war against the House of Wessex. In York, Eric Bloodaxe ruled as a Nordic Jarl, giving out great silver neck rings to show favor, engraved with pagan and Christian symbols. A 10th century poet wrote, A guardian of the land held sway beneath a helmet of fear, giving lavish gifts, stern-minded he steadfastly ruled from the fortress of York over his sea-watched shores. Northerners saw him as a fearsome and formidable lord, but they preferred the rule of a Norseman in York to a Southerner in Westminster. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.